Dawn, I love following developments in cosmology, and as I have over the past couple of decades, the idea of multiple universes in many different forms have, have transformed themselves from wild and exciting speculation to interesting ideas, and now it seems almost the conventional wisdom. Uh, do you think multiple universes surely exist, and if they do, what kinds do you think really are the case? Yes, I do believe that, that multiple universes exist, although I'm not certain about them. It, 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 it seems to be a very good hypothesis that multiple universes exist. There are many different forms of them. One of them, one of them comes from, from quantum theory, which, which seems to say that, that nature has a choice at, at many different times. And I would say that, that it makes all the choices that it that for which there is a non-zero amplitude for it to make. And so this leads to what are often called the Everett many worlds. It's, it's one form of, of multiverse. And that's an enormous number of, of separate worlds that have no touch with one another. It's not like further in our space time. That's, a, that's quantum many worlds. Right, that's quantum, yes. Yeah. So in general, you can't connect back between two of them. Once they separate, you can't, in practice, you can't usually, usually get back. I mean, another kind that may be a little more mundane is that the universe might just be very big or infinitely big so that there's far more space out there than what we see. And, and of course, it, very far away, we can't be in con causal contact with it. And so it's, as, it's more or less as if it were a separate universe. It, it, we're connected to what's next to us, and that's connected to what's <laughs> next to that. But then you get far enough away, and we're not directly connected right, right, right. to that. So that's, a, that's another form that right. seems rather plausible, particularly when we include inflation which seems to indicate that the early universe expanded exponentially fast for a long time. So the whole universe is probably far bigger than, than, what, we, than what we see. So that gives so-called inflationary universes. Right, and some of those, uh, if you go further and in, in, in using a selection through the, through the possibility of different selection of physical laws or constants through string theory as an example, then you can get totally different bubble universes or pocket universes, call it what you will, branching off from that. So, so we have all these different kinds of potential other universes in one way or another. Uh, which do you believe are really existing? Well, I believe what really exists in multiple worlds, I, I believe that the, the Everett many worlds exists, or at least many different conscious perceptions. So it's, it's it, at least as okay. if the many worlds are. So in each one of those enormous number of, of Everett many worlds existing, you can still, within each one of those, have multiple universes, because each one has its own laws of physics, its own inflation, and its own other universes branching out, bubbling out from that, in each one of those. Yes, you could have each one of those, the, the Everett multi-world, many worlds by themselves does not necessarily imply that, for example, constants of physics would vary. But we do think that, that in the early universe there could be phase transitions, or there, there could be different amplitudes to have different effective constants of physics. That the, Say the masses and charges of elementary particles could be different, or maybe even the structure of space-time could be different. Because that's what we think about the world we're in now, and the world we're in now is not going to be that much different from any of the other ever m multiple worlds. So each one of those will have, it's like nesting. Each, in each multiple universe you have of nesting of other multiple universes of different kinds. Yeah, so there is there is a big nesting, and there's a question of how far you go. And so, I, you know, I how think, far do you go? Well, I think it's I think it's very likely that the universe is extremely big. So there are many many far more galaxies than okay. what we can see. I also think it's it, it, it's very likely that something like the Everett worlds is, in many worlds okay. is is right that there's that branching. Maybe a little less likely, but I still think it's fairly likely that there are other other parts of the universe or other pocket universes in which the effective laws of physics are 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 different. So I would I would go that that far. I wouldn't go so so far, far as, as as what some of the philosophers have suggested that maybe all logically <laughs> possible entities ex are all possible all okay. logical possibilities exist. I think that. I think if you get to that, then you find that the probability of what we observe turns out to be zero in that case, because yeah. you've got... But you still have an enormous number of, of, of worlds and worlds within worlds uh, that you have. And now that I know that you're very public about it, being a believer in God and right. believing in, in the Judeo-Christian God, um, uh, does it make sense to you that a God is in, that's so interested in you as a human being and a person has all these relationships has such an unbelievably vast 
uh, um, uh, constellation of universes that that we can't even express in, with any words. Well, I do believe that that you know God is infinite, and and so I think He could easily create an infinite number of these worlds. He, we, we already have evidence that he's created, a, you know, of order 100 billion people on Earth so far, and you know that's a huge number that he's poured out love to. And I think he could have poured out love to even far more creatures in many of these different branches. So I've even written a paper about it. Does God so love the multiverse? Yeah. Well, why would God love a multiverse? Well, I think one of the reasons is that I do believe God loves mathematical elegance and trying to get the simplest theories. And in in my mind, the the Multiverse theories can be simpler than single universe theories because you don't have to make you don't have to make the choices of particular constants of physics uh, <clears throat> that you might have in a single universe. There might be a more elegant principle that that, that determines a whole set of constants that apply across the multiverse. Even so, though the vast number of them will be uh, barren uh, or, or, or existing for microseconds. Yes, I mean even if they're barren, of course. I mean as far as creating conscious life that can, could have fellowship with God and know him and so on, that might occur in only a small part of them. But if God, God may prefer the elegance of the whole thing and even have parts that don't have these sentient observers in it, but it seems like he has created a, you know, a, a multiverse that does include sentient beings. Well, we are sentient beings, so he, he's, he's created us. And, and I think not just any multiverse would do that. I mean, I think there are a lot of multiverses that God might have created instead that don't have sentient beings. So I think he, I think he does value the elegance of having simple laws of physics that may tend to produce a multiverse rather than a single universe. And he also, I think, has a desire for having sentient beings to, to show his, his love to. And, you know, a multiverse could help create even more, even more of those, though, of course, you could say a single universe that's just infinite in size. I mean, that form of multiverse where you just have a, a, an infinitely large universe could already have an infinite number of sentient beings. So God could have created an infinite number of sentient beings without necessarily having a large number of different constants of physics. So, and, and But if there are those uh, multiple universes by different uh, constants of physics, then you have to have something more than an infinite number of sentient beings because you could have done that in, in one well-ordered universe. Yes, but of course, you know, uh, uh, Googleplex times infinity is still infinity. So it could, I mean, it's still, it's, it's an infinite number. I don't know whether you'd say it's a bigger infinity. I mean, there, there would, in some sense, I suppose, be more variation because there would be, they could have more varied experiences and, 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 and so on in this. So, yeah, it, it, might be a, it might be a bigger order of infinity. I don't know whether that, maybe that expresses more of God's love. But I, the main reason that I'm in favor of the multiverse scientifically is that it does seem to be, Tentatively, it seems like it might be a simpler hypothesis because then you have, don't have to find a reason for the, or, or say is, is chosen randomly or, or, or just by fiat, some particular constant of physics. God might have created an elegant structure that leads to a whole distribution of many constants of physics, and that might be simpler and more elegant than a particular one. Just in a similar way, that the way that one single integer that, uh, that encodes everything in all the libraries on Earth is a very complicated thing. It's more complicated than the set of all integers. 